Okay, so we've got green at the moment. What we're now going to do is implement our division test, start to write our division class, then we're going to be doing a lot of refactoring. And as long as we still get green, we know that everything's fine. So let's start by just creating a new test in here. We'll do this first of all, we already know how this is roughly going to work. So we'll create a division test. Again, go ahead and just copy over our sample test just so it's a little bit easier for us. And we'll start to go ahead and update this. So let's just change over the class name here, division test, and we'll go ahead and create our first test just in here. So the first thing we want to do is a very similar thing to our addition. This is that it divides the given operands. So let's create our test in here, divides given operands like so. And then we'll go ahead and start to write this out. So we're going to create a new app calculator division class. We're going to set our operands. So this will just be set operands and let's just keep this really simple and let's say 100 divided by 2 so we know that that is going to be 50 and what you could do is in this case the way that this is going to work is provide 2 again what this will do is it will do 100 divided by 2 divided by 2 so it, you know it's not an ideal thing but obviously we're just playing around here so now we want to just do a very simple assertion what we've already seen before so we're going to assert that this equals 50 and again we're going to say division calculate. Now this is where when you are writing tests for individual units of things, you start to notice common functionality. So we know that we've got a calculate method on both of these classes. They're both very similar. They both allow us to set operands and they both allow us to calculate. Now the difference is that calculate will work differently, obviously, for division, multiplication, addition, but we have a common set operands, which sets an array of things that we want to perform an action on. So in this case, uh, we know that this is going to fail. We'll go ahead and implement our class and everything like that. And then we'll do a little bit of refactoring. And as long as we arrive back at green, then that's the whole point. We know that everything is still working. So let's uh, go and create a similar class to this. What I'm just going to do is copy over the whole structure of this uh, just to keep things a little bit simpler. So division.php, let's paste this in and go ahead and start to change this over. So we know that this is the same. So we can keep this in here. Obviously, the class name is going to be different. We are going to throw this exception. So we can leave this in here. We'll write another test that this does actually throw an exception. Uh, but overall, we will uh, be refactoring this anyway. So we have everything in place. Calculate should return that division operation and we should get this uh, you know, working as expected. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and say return 50 just for now so we can actually get this passing. And if we go ahead and run our tests, that passes. Now we can go and actually implement the division functionality. So I'm purposely going to, again, make this a little bit more uh, tricky than it needs to be, just so we can go back and refactor it later. So we're going to go ahead and set result to zero. We're going to come down and we're going to go and for each loop over each of the operands. So this operands as operand, like so. And then what we're going to do is first of all, check if the index and if we just bring an index in here, like so, we're going to check if this equals zero. So if it's the first item, like so, we want to set the result to that operand so we can further uh, do any division on it. And then we're just going to continue the loop. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to set result equal to what we're going to assign result divided by operand to that result. So now this should give us uh, the division in sequential order. So let's just return the result here that we've uh, assigned to this and we should get green and there we go. So obviously I'm not happy with this. So I'm going to go ahead and refactor it. The first thing we're going to refactor though is this here. So what I would typically do in this case, uh, if this was a kind of similar thing is I would create uh, some kind of operation abstract class. So now that we know our tests are passing, we can go ahead and refactor. So only refactor when your tests are passing, because then you'll know that your refactor has broken your tests. So this will be an abstract class and it will be operation abstract. And we know that as part of this, we're doing a similar thing on division and addition, which is setting our operand. So we can literally take all of this, get rid of it like so, 
take all of this from division and get rid of it and basically put it into this abstract class that we can then extend. So that makes sense. An abstract, if you weren't aware, is just so uh, we can't instantiate this on its own. There's no need to. So let's just add a namespace into here and we'll start to run our tests again. So app calculator and we should be good to go. So let's go over to division and extend this. So we're going to extend operation abstract and that implements that uh, still. So that still implements that. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same on here. So extends this and implements our operation interface. So let's go ahead and run our tests and we get green. So we know that just by refactoring this, this has worked. We don't need to do anything else. We get the exact same results. So we know that we haven't broken anything. So now that we've done this, we're going to go back to here. I'm going to refactor this. And once again, as long as we get green, we know that this has worked. Now, another way to do this is to use array reduce. So we're going to go ahead and return array reduce. And the whole point of this is even if you're not really sure what you're doing, you know that once you end up with the re result that you expect, you've done a successful refactor. So that's the whole point here. So we're going to uh, do a reduce on the, each of the operands. And as part of array reduce, we have the current and the carry value, and I'm just going to call these A and B. And what we can do now is first of all, check if A doesn't equal null, which is the default value that we can also define here if we want to. And we want to check that B doesn't equal null. Well, if that's the case, we're going to return A divided by B. Otherwise, we're going to return B. So regardless of whether this makes uh, sense whatsoever, uh, this will actually give us the result we need and we should get a successful refactor. So that's just another way of dividing numbers in a list of uh, numbers. Now what we want to do is think about division by zero. Now obviously over in our division test, if we were to say and just temporarily change this to uh, zero and then five, uh, we know that we're going to get an error because we are dividing by zero. So we get a division by zero error. Now, what I want to do is write a test specifically that says, well, we're going to ignore any operands that we give that are zero. So for this, we might create a test that says removes or ignores whatever you want to say division by zero operands. And what we can then do is start to write out how we would expect this to work. So let's go and new up division. Let's use division set operands. And let's say something like 10, 0, 0, 5, 0, or 50, 0, whatever we want to say. So we know that the result of this should be 2 because it's essentially just 10 divided by 5. So we should get the result 2. So again, we can assert here that this will equal two and that is division calculate like that. So let's just bring in our dot block there before we forget and um, let's go ahead and run this test. So we know that we get division by zero. We need to know that these are being removed. Now we can go ahead, refactor this so it works and then we should get green. So in this case, it's pretty simple. We have a function in PHP called array filter, which will remove any false null or zero values. So what we can do in this case is just use array filter on our operands before we start to reduce and go ahead and divide. So just by doing that, we go ahead and run our test. We get green. We know that nothing else is broken. We know that it works. So that is as simple as it is. If, for example, implementing this would have broken this test here, then obviously we would have known about it. So finally, we want a test just to say if we don't have any operands uh, set, we want to throw an exception. So it's very similar to the other one, but we've pretty much covered, uh, you know, all of the major refactoring of this and we know that our tests are still working. So uh, we're going to create another test in here very, very quickly. We've already seen this before, but it's always a good idea to go over. No operands given throws. And you know what? Actually, I'm just going to pull the test over from our addition test. So no operands given throws exception when calculating. So let's pull this over to our division test and go ahead and add our dot block just in there. And now obviously what we're doing is catching the same exception, but we're just calling division and we're calling calculate without any um, operands. So let's go ahead and run our tests and we get green. That is because over in here we included this. So obviously if we weren't including this, 
uh, or if something had gone wrong somewhere like this, we obviously get red because uh, we're expecting this. So that is now our division class built, tested, but more importantly, refactored along the way, both with that operation abstract and using array reduce rather than a for each loop. We know just by writing our test, first of all, that when we refactor, everything uh, continues to work as we refactor.